Bolger, French 2 students. This is your teaching video for Lesson 24A, pages 340 to 345 in your textbook. S'il vous plaît, ouvrez vos livres à la page 340. Lesson 24. Qui a de la chance? Vendredi après-midi. Anne et Valérie part de leur projet pour le week-end. Qu'est-ce que tu vas faire samedi soir? Je vais aller au cinéma avec Jean-Pierre. Tu as de la chance. Moi, je dois rester à la maison. Mais pourquoi? Les amis de mes parents viennent chez nous ce week-end. Mon père insiste pour que je reste pour le dîner. Quelle barbe! C'est vrai, tu n'as pas de chance. Lundi matin. Anne et Valérie partent de leur week-end. Alors, tu as passé un bon week-end? Euh, non, pas très bon. Mais tu es sorti avec Jean-Pierre. C'est vrai, je suis allé au cinéma avec lui. Nous avons vu un très, très mauvais film. Après le film, j'ai eu une dispute avec Jean-Pierre. Et, en plus, j'ai perdu mon porte-monnaie. Et je suis rentré chez moi à pied. Et toi? Tu es resté chez toi? Non. Comment les amis de tes parents ne sont pas venus? Si, si, ils sont venus. Avec leur fils. Et alors? Eh bien, c'est un garçon très sympa et très amusant. Après le dîner, nous sommes allés aux Zinettes. Nous avons assisté à un concert de rock absolument extraordinaire. Après, nous sommes allés dans un café et nous avons fait des projets pour le week-end prochain. Qu'est-ce que vous allez faire? Nous allons faire une promenade à la campagne dans la nouvelle voiture de sport de Thomas. C'est le nom de mon nouveau copain. Toi, vraiment, tu as de la chance. Let's work through the translation of this. Hopefully you noticed as I read it that there were kind of three different tenses here. The first little section was the present tense, then um, it kind of switched and was the past tense, and then at the end when they're talking about the following weekend's plans, it's the future tense. So, who <coughs> is lucky? Friday afternoon. Anne and Valerie are talking about their plans for the weekend. What are you going to do Saturday night? So that's a future tense. I'm going to go to the movies with Jean-Pierre. Again, future. You are lucky. Me, I must stay at home. But why? My parents' friends are coming to our house this weekend. So that's in the present tense. My father insists that I stay for dinner. What a pain. It's true. You are not lucky. Monday morning. Anne and Valerie talk about their weekend. So, did you spend or have a good weekend? And again, notice this is our past tense. Uh, no, not very good. But you went out with Jean-Pierre. It's true, I went to the movies with him. We saw a very, very bad movie. After the movie, I had a quarrel or fight with Jean-Pierre. And in addition, I lost 
my wallet. And I went back to my house on foot. And you? You stayed at your house? No. How? The friends of your, or your parents' friends didn't come? Yes, yes, they came with their son. And so, well, he's a very nice and very funny boy. After dinner, we went to the Zenith. We attended an absolutely extraordinary rock concert. Afterwards, we went to a cafe and we made plans for next weekend. What are you going to do? So here's where we switch from being in the past tense to being in the future tense. We are going to go for a ride in the country in Thomas's new sports car. That's the name of my new boyfriend. You really, you are lucky. And it tells you here that the zenith, this little star, says, Une salle de concert à Paris, Parc de la Valette. So zenith is a concert hall in Paris at the Parc de la Valette. So remember, initially, right, um, Anne was disappointed because Anne had to stay at home and she thought she'd have a terrible weekend. And Valerie was going out with her boyfriend and thought she'd have a great weekend. And it was sort of the opposite that happened. So again, this is really kind of um, a good review in that we have the future tense when they're talking about their plans for the weekend. We have the present tense when they're talking kind of in present. We have them describing then what they did in the weekend in the past tense and then talking about the plans for the next weekend in the future tense. So again, this is a good review of all of these tenses. So we have the note culturel, les gens français et la musique. Pour moi, la musique c'est tout, déclare Anne. Une jeune française de Kenzon. Sa copine est là et d'accord. Aujourd'hui, on ne peut pas vivre sans musique. Comme les jeunes américains, les gens français sont des fans de la musique. Ils aiment particulièrement le rock, le rap français ou américain, la techno, le pop, le reggae et les ska. Mais certains préfèrent la musique classique. En semaine, ils écoutent leur musique préférée sur leur baladeur et leur chaîne hi-fi. Le week-end, ils vont au concert écouter les stars de la chanson française, anglaise ou américaine. Le 21 juin de chaque année, les jeunes célébraient la fête de la musique avec tous les Français. C'est une grande fête nationale avec des concerts publics gratuits dans toutes les villes et tous les villages de France. Ce jour-là, 800 mille musiciens jouent pour 60 millions de spectateurs. Pour la fête de la musique, tout le monde fait de la musique. So this is about French young people and music. For me, music, it's everything declares Anne, a young French girl of 15 years. Her friend Helen agrees. Today, one cannot live without music. Like young Americans, young French people are uh, fans or fanatical about music. They particularly like rock, French or American rap, techno, pop, reggae, and ska, but some prefer classical music. During the week, they listen to their favorite music on their CD players and their stereos. On weekends, they go to a concert to listen to the stars of 
French, English, and American songs. On the 21st of June of each year, the young people celebrate the music festival with all the French people. It's a huge or large national festival with public free public concerts in all the towns and all the villages of France. This day, 800,000 musicians play for 60 million spectators. For the music festival, everyone makes music. So a couple things here. Again, they're basically just saying that French young people like American young people like music. I know they talk here a little bit about them listening to the music on their balladers, right, their CD players and their stereos. But remember, French people are going to be like you. So our book is about 20 years old. These days, French young people are going to listen to music the same way you listen to music, okay? And... They talk about this big music festival that takes place in on the same day all throughout the country in every city and town where there's free concerts. So we saw in the little bit of reading that we did in the introduction that there was present tense, future tense, and past tense. And again, present tense, you learned back in French 1, right? You have present tense conjugations of um, regular ER verbs, regular IR verbs, regular RE verbs, and then some irregular verbs. You've been doing present tense conjugations for quite a while. Future tense, right? Our only way right now to talk about the future tense is we conjugate the verb à l'air and we have a second verb in the infinitive, right? When we look back here at the future, right, that's what they're doing here. Um, here's our subject, here's our present tense form of the verb à l'air, and then here's our second verb in the infinitive, right? That's how we form always the future tense. So, more recently, though, just before um, the break, you learned about the passé composé, which is our past tense. And before break, you learned how to conjugate the past tense using avoir. So remember the format of this. Um, if it's a question, we might have a question word. If it's a question, we'll have ESCA, right? Remember, this isn't in every single um, sentence. This would just be in the questions, okay? Then we always have our subject. And then remember, because this is using avoir, we're going to have avoir conjugated. Okay, that means, remember, conjugated means that avoir is made to match our subject, okay? Then remember, we're gonna have our past participle. And then our dot, dot, dot for whatever else is in this sentence. And remember, if our sentence is negative, our ne, goes before our conjugated avoir, and our pa goes after it. So remember kind of what was important about the passé composé is that the passé composé requires two words. Okay, so remember that was that conjugated form of avoir in our past participle. Okay, so our two words here are our conjugated avoir and our past participle. So um, again, to review really quickly the conjugations of avoir, right? J, tu, a, il, el, od, a, nous avod. Vous avez, and il, and l, 
pluriel ot. Okay, that's this first part here. Okay, that's our conjugated forms of avoir that we're talking about. Now, the past participles, the past participle depends upon the verb, right? So for a regular IR verb, we take off the IR and we add the accented E on the end of our infinitive to form our past participle. For a regular ER verb, again, we start with our infinitive, we take off our ER, and we add our accented E. And for our regular RE verb, we start with our infinitive, we take off our RE, and we add a U. And then there were five irregular verbs that had irregular past participles. So for etra, the past participle is ete. For avoir, the past participle is u. For fair, the past participle is fe. For metra, the past participle is me. And for voir, the past participle is vous. Okay. So again, Our conjugated forms of avoir, right? This conjugated avoir, that's this, okay? The second part of this, uh, the conjugated, um, the past participle, okay? This, that's these parts that we're talking about here. Okay, so this is review. Some of you did pretty well on those quizzes um, over lessons 22 and 23, and some of you did it. If you didn't do very well on that quiz, it probably would be a good idea to take a look at that again um, and kind of review those quizzes because, again, you're certainly going to have to do this on your test. Okay, so this was the passé composé using avoir, and again, we see this. Um, in our writing here, okay, in what we read, we saw this with nous avons vous, okay, um, and tu a passé, okay. So those were the past tenses that you had previously learned. However, in this, you also were introduced to some new ways to form the past tense. Je suis rentré. Okay, um, les amis et tes parents ne sont pas venus. So, using avoir is not the only way to form the passé composé. So, most verbs use avoir, but there are some verbs that form the passé composé using etre. So, the format of this. And again, I'm going to put that question stuff in here because you still could see a question, in which case you'd have your question word. Remember, that's your interrogative expression. You could have ESCA, and if it's not a question, you just don't have these parts, right? Then we have our subject. Okay, but now... Our verb that's conjugated is etra. So we have our conjugated etra. And then we're going to have our past participle. And 
and our dot, dot, dot for whatever else is in our sentence. So notice right now, right, the only real difference here is which verb we're using, correct? Here in um, the verbs that you've learned the passé composé of so far, we used avoir. Today, we're going to talk about verbs that use etra. Now, there are some differences, okay? One big difference, right? Our conjugated form of etra still has to, right? Our form is based upon our subject. So, again, the forms of that are, right, here's our etra conjugations. Hopefully you remember these. These are from French one. Je suis to a il l or owed a du som vous at an il or l pluriel salt. Okay. And just like avoir, if we want to make this negative, our n and our pa go around our conjugated form of etra. Okay? Here's where things start to get a little bit different. Okay? First thing is our past participle has to agree in gender and number with the subject. Now, agree in gender, remember gender means masculine or feminine, number means singular or plural. So the past participle is going to take endings. And so we have our masculine, our feminine, our singular, and our plural. And I'm just, again, I'm going to put kind of an N-A here. The generic past participle always is the masculine singular form. To make that masculine singular plural, we're going to add an S to it, to the past participle. To make that masculine singular past participle feminine, we're going to add, hope you guessed it, an E. And to make that past participle feminine and plural, we're going to add an ES. So, kind of the first verb that we're going to talk about that is a verb that uses etra in the past tense is aller. So aller is a verb that uses etra for the passé composé. So, for example, I might have je suis allé. Okay, past participle for aller is allé. Now that's different than this is je suis allé. Can you tell me what the difference is? Right, in this top one, this has to be a male speaking because ale doesn't have an extra e on it. But in this second one, this is a female speaking because the ale has this extra e that got added. So you tell me who makes up this group? Because this ale has this extra es on it, that tells us that this group of nu is feminine and plural. 
okay? So the difference between the passé composé using avoir and the passé composé using être. When you use avoir, okay, this past participle is always the same. It never changes, right? J, B, L, A, B. My past participle is spelled the same way both times, okay? With etra, our past participle is going to change depending upon what the subject of our sentence is. So if I used aller, it would be je, and because I'm a girl, je be je suis aller with an extra e. And L, A, Ale, with an extra E. Il, A, Ale, with no extra E. So here, the big difference is the past participle is not always the same because the past participle has to agree in gender and number with the subject of the sentence. So if the subject of the sentence is feminine, I'm going to add that E. If the subject of my sentence is masculine and plural, I have to add an S to my past participle. And if the subject of my sentence is feminine and plural, I have to add an ES. Okay, so hopefully you've taken down some notes. Let's take a look at this the way it's presented to you in your textbook. <coughs> so if you will um, turn to, um, s'il vous plaît, ouvrez vos livres à la page, uh, 342. Right, we have le passé composé avec être. Note the forms of the passé composé of a l'air in the sentences below, paying attention to the endings of the past participle a l'air. Jean-Paul est allé au cinéma. Melanie est allé à la plage. Eric et Patrick sont allés en ville. Mes copines sont allés à la campagne. The passé composé of a l'air and certain verbs of motion is formed with être according to this pattern, the present of etra plus the past participle. Now, what they were asking you to kind of notice here is, okay, Jean-Paul, masculine, singular, so alle doesn't have anything extra on it. Melody, feminine, singular, alle has an extra e on it. Eric and Patrick, that's masculine and plural. And Ale this time, notice, has an extra S on it. And lastly, May Copedes, that's a female group of friends, so that's feminine and plural. Okay, And notice my Ale this time has an extra ES on it. So notice that our past participles here have to agree in gender, which again, remember, is our masculine or feminine, and number, remember that's our singular versus plural. So, when the passé composé of a verb is conjugated with etra and not with avoir, the past participle agrees with the subject and gender number. So, this isn't just with aller. This is any verb that uses etra for the passé composé, the past participle has to agree. Okay, so any verb that uses etra 
for the passé composé. So again, the first verb you're going to learn that does this, okay, is aller. But this would be true of any verb. So right, so here we're talking about a boy. So notice my allays just all end in the accented e. But over here, I'm talking about a girl, and so I have to add that e to all of my allays. Here I have a mixed group of males and females, so I just add those s's. Here I have two females, right, feminine and plural. So I have to add those ESs to all of them. The negative, notice the and pas don't go around the conjugated form of etra. And with questions, it's the same as um, what you did with avoir. It's just that your past participle still has to agree. Okay, so that's what this is saying, okay? And this is showing you. Now, again, notice this is kind of interesting because, for example... Okay. In this slide, I can tell the difference, right? Ale with just an S on it means I'm either talking to a mixed group, okay, or an all male group versus this ale with the ES on it. I know that I'm talking to an all female group. So you actually get a little bit more information when you use um, the passe composé with etra about your subject. So let's practice this a little bit. Exercice en à Paris. Des amis sont allés à Paris samedi dernier. Chacun est allé à un endroit différent. Dis qui est allé aux endroits suivants. Complétez chaque phrase avec le sujet approprié et la forme correspondante du verbe aller. Right? Directions are in French. So, some friends went to Paris last Saturday. Each went to a different spot. Say who went to the following spots. Complete each sentence with the appropriate subject and the correspond and the corresponding form of the verb aller. So what we see here, these are our four choices for subjects. Notice, in all of these, we also have to add our conjugated form of etra. Right? So really quickly, those again are je suis, tu es, il, elle, own, a, nous sommes. Vous êtes. And il and el pluriel. So now we're not going to be using all of them, right? Because these are our subjects. So Olivier, it would be a, right? For Claire, it would be a. For Eric et Jacques, it would be sot. And for Anne and Monique, it would be sot. So that'll be the first word that we would put in the blank besides the subjects. Now, how do I know which one is which? Right? Notice. Extra E. Nothing. S. Right? So how do you know which subject it is? It's based on what you see. So for example, this example, notice that ale ends in an extra E and S. That means it has to be feminine and plural. The only one of these subjects that's feminine and plural is ad a monique. So our sentence becomes ad a monique saute aller au Louvre. Now, if you'd rather just say elle and il, that's fine with me. But I'm going to ask this be a speaking one, and then you listen for the confirmation. So numero un. Claire a allé à la Tour Eiffel. Deux. Olivier a allé au Centre Pompidou. Trois. Eric et Jacques sont allés au Stade de France. Quatre. Anne et Monique 
sont allés aux Galeries Lafayette. Numéro 5 Olivier est allé à la Villette. 6 Eric et Jacques sont allés au Zidith. 7 Olivier est allé au Musée d'Orsay. Et 8 Anne et Monique sont allés au Carté Latin. Right? So basically for these, right? Every time I should have had Oliver every time there was nothing extra on my verb. Right? I should have used okay, Claire every time I just had an extra E. I should have used Eric et Vent Jacques every time I had an extra S and just an S. And lastly, I should have used Ad et Monique Sot as my subject every time I had an extra ES. So again, the way I could tell is because these past participles have to agree in gender and number with the subject of the sentence, and because they have these endings, you could tell which subject you had to use for your sentence. So, as I mentioned, aller is just the first verb that your textbook is teaching you that uses the verb etre. So these are verbs that use etre for the past they composé, for that past tense. Now notice your book is only giving you five of them. There are more than five of them. But, si vous plaît, répétez, aller, aller, nous sommes allés en ville, arriver, arriver, Vous êtes arrivé à midi. Rentré. Rentré. Nous sommes rentrés à la maison à onze heures. Restez. Restez. Les touristes sont restés à l'hôtel Ibis. Venir. Venu, qui est venu hier? So, again, translating this, okay? We went to town. And again, I can tell this is either an all-male group or a mixed group because it just ends in an S. You arrived at noon. This you is a group of people because there's this S on it. We returned to the house at 11 o'clock. Again, a mixed group probably because there's just an S. And the tourists stayed at the Ibis Hotel. Again, an S. And who came yesterday? Again, we know this is singular, and again, because it's who and we don't know what gender, then we kind of default to the masculine form. So your textbook only gives you five verbs that use etra. I want you to be familiar with the fact that more than just five verbs use etra in the passé composé. So a way to remember the verbs that use the passé composé is Dr. and Mrs. Vandertram. So this is, these are... Verbs that use etra for the passé composé. Okay, so for that past tense. So what I've given you here is what they mean and then the past participle. So devenir to become devenu, revenir to come again or come back, revenu. Monte to climb, monte. Reste to stay, reste. Sortir to go out, sorti. Venir to come, venu. 
aller to go, aller, d'être to be bored, de, descendre to descend, go downstairs, descendu, entrer to enter, entrer, rentrer to re enter, to return, go back, come back, rentrer, tomber to fall, tomber like a person falling, retourner to return, retourner, arriver to arrive, arriver, mourir to die, mort, and partir to leave, parti. You won't see these on tests or quizzes, so you don't worry about that. Only the five that your textbook uses here are the ones that are going to show up on tests and quizzes. But again, for those of you who like French and are going to continue taking French, either French 3 is an independent study with me in the future before you graduate from high school, or who go on to college and take some college-level French, you need to know that there are more than just five verbs that use être for the passé composé, okay? And this is one way to remember them. All right, exercise sake. Qui est resté à la maison? Samedi après-midi, les personnes suivantes ont fait certaines choses. Dis si oui ou non, elles sont restées à la maison. So who stayed at home? Saturday afternoon, the following people did certain things. Say if yes or no, they stayed at home. Now, what's interesting about this is this is a combination, or this is always using the verb reste, which is an etra verb, right? So this is always going to be the subject that they give us in the sentence. Our conjugated form of etra. And then our past participle. which in this case, we're always going to be using reste. Now, our reste, though, right, changes. So, Paul, male, so reste is just nothing added to it. Melody is a girl, so our reste has an extra E. Now, Paul a regardé la télé. So, Paul watched TV. If he watched TV, he stayed at home. So, we say, il est resté à la maison. Okay, so we're always going to have a la maison in it. And if they didn't stay at home, it's going to be ne and, sorry, by ne I put in the wrong spot, ne and pa if they didn't. Okay, so in the second one, Melody a fait des achats. Melody went shopping, so elle n'est pas restée à la maison. So again, I'd like you to say the sentences, and then you will hear me confirm them for you. So numéro un, Mademoiselle Jolie a lavé sa voiture. Elle est restée à la maison. Can rest day, remember, would have to have an extra E. De nous avons fait une promenade à vélo. Nous ne sommes pas restés à la maison. Rest day would have to have an S. If it had an ES, it would mean the du was an all-girl group. Toi, tu as nettoyé le garage. Tu es resté à la maison. If you were talking to a male, it'd just be resté with nothing added to it. If you were talking to a girl, you'd add an E to it. Numéro 4. Eric et Olivier sont joué, or sorry, Eric et Olivier ont joué au jeu vidéo. This one depends a little bit on how you interpret this. You could say, il ne sont pas resté à la maison, or il sont resté à la maison. Either way, your resté will have an S on it. Cinq, Christine et Isabelle ont travaillé dans le jardin. Elles sont restées à la maison. 
the Oreste would have to have an extra ES on it. Numero 6, vous avez fait du rôle. Vous n'êtes pas resté à la maison. And again, here, your resté, if you were talking about just yourself or talking to one male person, resté would just end in its accent in E. If you were talking to one female person, you'd have to add an extra E to it. If you were talking to more than one person, you'd add S. Numéro 7. Mes cousins ont fait de la voile. Ils ne sont pas restés à la maison. Resté would have an S added to it. Oui, j'ai fait du jogging. Je ne suis pas resté à la maison. And if you're a girl, you'd add an E to your resté. 6. La journée de Sandrine. Pendant les vacances, Sandrine travaille dans une agence de tourisme. Le soir, elle raconte sa journée à son père. So, Sandrine's day. During vacation, Sandrine works for a travel agency. In the evening, she tells about her day to her father. So, these are all going to be the past tense. What's happening here, though, is there are some verbs that use avoir for the past tense and some verbs that use etra. Sandrine is a girl. So, anytime we use etra for our passé composé, we're going to have to add an E to our past participle, okay? So, numéro un. Je suis arrivé à neuf heures. Right? That's an etra verb. We could go through here and label these all. That's an etra verb. Telephone is not on that list of five verbs on page 344. Parler is not either. But aller is, roll tray is, copier is not, prepare is not, reste is, dine is not, roll tray is. Okay. So, numéro deux. J'ai téléphoné à un client anglais. Right? So, if it's an etra, I'm going to use je, sui, my past participle, and then I'll add an extra e to it. If it's avoir, it's going to be je, and my past participle. So, numéro trois. J'ai parlé avec des touristes japonais. Numéro quatre. Je suis allé au restaurant à midi et demi. Cinq. Je suis rentré au bureau à deux heures. Six. J'ai copié des documents. Sept. J'ai préparé des billets d'avion. Huit. Je suis resté jusqu'à six heures. Neuf. J'ai dîné à la ville. Dix. Je suis rentré à la maison à neuf heures. So, your homework is exercise one. We did this one out loud, right? So, this one again says, in Paris... Um, some friends went to Paris last Saturday. Each went to a different spot. Say who went to the following spots. Complete each sentence with the appropriate subject and the, chorus, then the corresponding form of the verb aller. Number one, I want you to write the whole sentence. Okay, and remember... Um, you're going to put one of these choices in the blank along with your conjugated form of etra. So remember, for Olivier, that's A. For Claire, it's A. For Eric, A. Jacques, it's Sot. And for Anne, A. Sophie, it's Sot. 
And to know which one you put, it depends upon what you see on Ale, right? Ale, just like this, should be Olivier. Ale, with an extra E, should be Claire. Ale, with an S, should be Eric and Jacques. And Ale, with an extra ES, should be Ad and Monique. So you're going to write out those whole sentences for the eight of those. Au revoir. À demain.